today we're going to show you how to rebuild a John Beam R2020 pump. Right now Jimmy has the hose clamps already loosened up on the suction hose, which is right here. And we're going to go ahead and pull that off. And on this side we've already removed our bypass hoses. So now we're going to get ready to go up to the head itself and start removing the bolts. So now we're up here at the top of the head. We have a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a 9 16 socket. And we're going to go ahead and remove each of the four bolts on top of the head. So we have all the four bolts loosened up here. You can see they're rather long bolts. So we got the four bolts removed from the head itself. Now that we have all the four bolts out, we lay them back here where they won't fall down. And we're gonna go ahead and pull the head straight up. If we pull it straight up, we won't damage the ceramic cylinders underneath. So now we have the head itself off and laying on a flat surface here. We got it on a workbench. Um, if you have a vise, it makes the process a lot easier if you place the uh, head in the vise. so it doesn't slide around as you're trying to remove the valves. So next we're going to remove this valve cover plate on top. You're going to use a 3 quarter inch drive socket and you're going to take the cover off. can take two flat bladed screwdrivers and put one on each side and just wiggle the valve plugs up and pop them out. So we have the valve plugs removed, we're going to go ahead and use our fingers to remove the springs. So when you go to remove the springs, they can come out several different ways. They could come out together like this, as in one whole piece. Or unlike this one, it may come out just a spring and you can see that the bottom plate is still in the head itself. For the final way, you can see this one shattered. You got the spring and then you got pieces of the plate. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the valve cages. You can just use your fingers and kind of wiggle them, or there's a valve puller tool we have laying here on the table. You can use that to grab the edge and just pull the cages out. So as you can see, we removed our two valve cages. Now if you look down in, the valve seats are still down in there. We're going to use that same valve puller tool, except we're going to flip it over and use the other end. As you can see, that kind of fits down in on that valve seat, and you can just wiggle that around. And then once you get it loose, you should be able to flip it back over and use the hooked end and pull the valve seats out completely. 
So there's the first side we have out. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. So now we have both valve seats out on the top side. Now if you look back down in there, there's more springs and valve cages as well as seats. So we're just going to repeat that process again. So as you can see, we got all four valve gauges off, valve seats, and springs out. And you can look down in the head that they're removed. So we're going to go ahead and remove the head from the vise and flip it over. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. We'll start by removing the plate. So we're going to go ahead and remove the valve plate cover again, once again using a three-quarter inch socket. Remove that plate cover. Then once again, we'll take our two flat bladed screwdrivers and remove the plug covers. Sometimes these may be a little rusted or a little tight, so you may have to wiggle them a little bit to get them to come up. So on this one, we're having some trouble getting the lower two seats out. So you can also, if you don't have your valve puller or you're having trouble, you can use a large flat bladed screwdriver and just reach in and just pop it out. So now we have all the valve seats, all the springs, and all the valve cages removed. We're going to go ahead and proceed into rebuilding the pump. So the next step, as you can see we've started to do it here, is to scrape all four of the cylinder gaskets. You can see the cylinder gasket have this green gasket on it. You can see where we've started to scrape this one off. Uh, when you scrape it off, it has to be completely clean before you can put the new gasket back on. Make sure you get up around the edges of the, the head itself and make sure it's clean underneath there. So now you can see we have the top two green gaskets off. And you can see that we got it cleaned off pretty well. Now we'll proceed, we'll flip it over to the bottom and get the bottom two taken off as well. So as you can see, we now have the gaskets scraped off of this side as well. So we have all four gaskets off and we're ready to start rebuilding the pump. So our next step is we have a new rebuild kit here for the seats and the valve springs. So we got one already out of the the package here. Your next step is to install the o-ring onto the seats and you're going to do that for each of the four seats. So as you can see we have all the new o-rings on the new seats so probably one of the most important steps before you go to put these seats back in is to take grease and place it around the o-ring there to keep it from getting cut we recommend this grease from napa so once you get some squeeze on you can go ahead and just rub it around on the seat itself so once you get the grease on, you can go ahead and stick the seat on the top. You got your tool, and you can just wiggle it down. And you can see here, it goes the whole way down in to the very bottom, the lower section. And then you're going to repeat that step for the other side. As you can see now, the seat's back in. So now we have both valve seats back in the head. We're going to go ahead and replace the valve cages back down into the head itself as well. So as you can see we have the valve cage back down in on this side. And we don't have one in on this side so we'll go ahead and replace that one next. So 
So now we have both cages in. We're gonna take the spring in the seat and put it down into the chamber. Make sure that your spring is always facing out. Not You do not wanna see the flat plate facing up. Make sure the spring is facing you. We'll get the second one and we'll drop it in as well with the spring facing up. And there you can see we have both springs. In. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat that process again with the valve seats with the rubber O-rings on them. We're going to put grease around them. We'll use our valve puller tool and we'll place the valve seats back in along with the cages and then the springs. In the rebuild kit, you get two O-rings, two additional O-rings. You're going to want to take the old O-rings off of the valve plugs. So to do that, we place a little bit of a cut in this one as you can see here. So we got this one started, now we're just going to pull it the rest of the way out. As you can see, we have the o-ring out here, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and put a new o-ring okay. So we got the new o-rings on the plugs, we're going to go ahead and stick some grease on that as well just to keep it from cutting your o-ring and then we're gonna go ahead and replace the plug back in into the head you can use it or you can gently tap it with back down into with a hammer and we're gonna repeat the same thing with this one we're gonna put grease on it and then we're going to go ahead and put it back down into the, the head. Just use a hammer. Tap it back down. Now we have one side of our pump just about rebuilt. We're going to replace the, the plug cover plate here. So now we have the one side of the, the head itself rebuilt. So now you can see we flipped our head back over. We've opened up our second rebuild kit. We got the four new springs, the four new seats. We've already went ahead and put the O-rings on the seats. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same process. We'll use our grease, grease the O-ring, slide them both back into the head and put the valve cage and put the spring back in on the bottom of each side. So as you can see we have the bottom seat in, the valve cage, and the spring back in with the spring facing up to us. We're just going to go ahead and repeat that same process on the top and then once we're done with that we're going to go ahead and get the valve cover plate, put the plugs in, put the valve cover plate back over top and we'll be ready to go. So now we got our whole head spray head back together. Uh, there's a packing rebuild kit we sell as well to get those green gaskets. You can see them in the pack here. We're going to go ahead and show you how to install them from where we scraped the previous ones. So the green gasket, you can see we put some grease on it. You just want to put grease on whichever side you're going to press in back towards the head. So we're just going to press that in with our fingers. If we have to remove it to rebuild the, the spray head itself again, it makes it a lot easier to get the gaskets off if they have some grease on them. So as you can see, we're going around this lightly with a screwdriver just to make sure that gasket is set flush back up against the head. So then we're going to repeat this process with the other one, put some grease on it. Press that back in against the head itself here. Use your fingers to get it started. And then you can take a flat bladed, bladed screwdriver like we did the first time. And gently go, go around it just to make sure that seat's back up against the head. Then what we'll do is we'll flip the spray head over again and we'll repeat that process on the lower two.
So while we still have our head in the vise, we're going to go ahead and show you how to rebuild a T-handle regulator while we have it in. Uh, the first step we're going to do is we're going to take the T-handle itself and we're going to unscrew that completely out of the regulator itself. So as you can see, we pulled the T-handle the off of the regulator. Now we're going to take a 9 16 socket and ratchet and we're going to loosen the three bolts that are on the regulator itself. the bolts completely out of the regulator. So once you remove the remaining bolt, we're going to go ahead and pull the regulator off, the house off. Now we got the bolts all out. We used a hammer to loosen it up just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and pull the regulator house off. Now we have the T-handled regulator cover off. You can see there's a washer on here. And then there's two springs on there. We're going to go ahead and remove the large spring and then the smaller spring. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the rod that holds them in. So now we have the rod out and we're going to go ahead and take a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, remove the set screw. Take a punch and a pair of vice grips. So here you have your old valve stem seat. You can see how much it's beveled compared to your new valve stem seat. So now we're going to go ahead and replace the valve stem seat. So we're going to take our packing and place it back on and then our washer. And we're going to go ahead and replace the new with the new valve stem seat. When you put that on, it's very important to hand tighten that as tight as you can get it by hand and then take your punch which you used earlier and don't tighten it any more than a quarter of a turn. If you tighten it more than a quarter of a turn to a half a turn it's going to smash your packing down and then you'll end up having a leak. Once that's done you can replace your set screw and tighten it back. Down. Remove our ceramic sleeve to get to the gasket. As you can see we had to use a chisel and a hammer you're probably going to have to do the same thing to get that sleeve pried up off. And there you can see we got our ceramic cylinder out. So now that we got the gasket scraped off and got that surface clean just like before, the regulator seat is down in here. So in order to get to that, we're going to have to take off this pipe down below here to replace it. So we flipped our regulator over. You can see the back side of the valve stem seat. We're going to go ahead and remove that now. Just take a punch and a hammer and pound down and then I'll press it out. So you can see the difference here between our old one, how the sides are very rounded compared to the new one where the sides are flat. So now we're going to go ahead and replace the old one and put the new one back in. 
So now we're going to go ahead and place the regulator seat. We're just going to drop it down in. Once that's down in, we take the rod and just line it up and give it a tap just to make sure it's pressed down in there. Just like earlier, we're going to take some grease and put it on our gasket here. You can go ahead and grease that up pretty good. Make sure the grease is on the side that's facing down towards the regulator. Once we get that, we're going to put our ceramic cylinder. We're going to grease that edge up on that. We're going to press that back down on. And just press it down in firmly with your, your hand. And then you're going to take your regulator stem, put some grease around the packing. Then you're going to go ahead and insert that back in. You may have to wiggle that a little bit with the new packing. It gets a little tight. Just make sure it slides down in and gives you a nice firm seal there. So once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and replace the small spring and the large spring back on. And then we'll also take our washer, place, place that back on and then put the cover over top.